Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ryan Madden. I'm the Vice President of Communications and Public Relations for the United Soccer League. Uh, Jake and I were just joking off stage. This is becoming a bit of an annual staff retreat for us here to Louisville, Kentucky. Um, but in all seriousness, the warmth with which this community has uh, embraced USL and embraced this club is, is tremendous. And once again, we're very, very appreciative for your hospitality. Um, just a couple of quick housekeeping notes before we get going. You should have received a media guide on your seat if you haven't already. Um, we're more than happy to provide some. There's extras off to the side of the room. Um, yes, t Sunday night's match is in fact a sellout. Um, hopefully you saw the news, but uh, the, once general admission opened up, uh, the match sold out in 96 minutes. So, that's something we're, we're very proud of and, and shows, I think, once again, what a, what a tremendous soccer city this is and what a wonderful uh, supporters culture Louisville City Football Club has. A um, couple of quick storylines. Both clubs with a chance to make history on Sunday night. Lou City looking to become the first team in USL Championship history to go back to back to back, while Real Monarchs is looking to become the first visiting team to win a USL Championship final. Um, and just one last quick note, tomorrow the United Soccer League will be hosting a USL Championship final happy hour from 5 to 6 at O'Shea's. So we welcome anyone who wants to join us uh, in that. It's with great pleasure then that I'd like to welcome to the stage USL President Jake Edwards for some opening remarks. Thank you everybody and uh, welcome to the uh, press conference here as we kick off uh, the weekend festivities around our championship final. Uh, it's our great pleasure uh, to be back here in Louisville uh, for the third year in a row. And I think if this team keeps winning, we are going to run out of places to uh, host this press conference. But we're in a new place now, and I thank our host here at the Hotel uh, Distill. New hotel just opened downtown, and thank you for providing this uh, great location here. Uh, a couple of thank yous. I'd like to thank Mayor Fisher and his administration and the city of Louisville for uh, all their support of this team throughout the year and for welcoming us back, uh, as I said, for the third year in a row now. Uh, I'd like to thank Club President Brad Estes and his entire staff who have been phenomenal all year to work with, uh, but uh, turning a game around of this magnitude in a week is no easy task. So I thank all of those folks for working with uh, hand in hand with my uh, USL team here to make this happen. And as Ryan said, tremendous accomplishment to sell out this game in such a short space of time. So congrats, Brad, and thank you to all the Louisville City staff that are here with us. We'd like to thank uh, the ownership group, uh, and it is a large ownership group here at Louisville City for their support of this club and, and of our league over the last few years. Um, and I'd like to recognize specifically uh, Chairman John Neese, who has been instrumental in the growth of this club uh, and the growth of our league. John serves on our executive committee as well as our board of governors, uh, and he's been instrumental in a lot of the strategic direction. Uh, and so we thank him for the support at the league level, as well as for everything he's done uh, with the ownership group to deliver what will be a world-class stadium and, and a showpiece stadium uh, in our league, and something that the players, uh, the club, and this community are going to be so proud uh, to call their home. Uh, 2019 for the USL has been one of our biggest and most impactful uh, seasons. We started by welcoming seven new expansion clubs uh, into the league. Uh, four of those teams built soccer-specific stadiums, and four of those clubs uh, made it all the way through to the playoffs. And one new club in particular, New Mexico United, led the league in attendance with over 13,000 uh, average gate. Uh, and made it a run in the quarter, in, to the quarterfinals uh, of the U.S. Open Cup. So tremendous accomplishment by the, uh, by the new teams uh, in 2019. Another big year for us, we launched our new men's professional league uh, underneath the championship called USL League One, and we kicked that off with 10 new professional clubs. I'm pleased to announce we'll have 12 new clubs, uh, a total of 12 clubs uh, in League One next year as we continue the mission of bringing professional soccer to new markets across the U.S. This year was also a special year as our players, for the first time, got together and organized to create the USL uh, Players Association. Now, as a league run by a lot of ex-professional and ex-collegiate players, we certainly welcome this move. Uh, and I thank the players and all of our owners of our clubs uh, greatly for coming together and working towards what will be the first collective bargaining agreement uh, in USL history. And finally, uh, we, uh, I'd like to thank our media partners at ESPN. This was a big year as we extended that partnership for another three years. So all of our championship games and League One games will continue to be on ESPN+. And you'll see a lot more games now of the championship on national television 
uh, including a number of games on ESPN Deportes, uh, starting with this game uh, on Sunday. So I'd like to thank Scott Guglielmino, uh, Sonia Gomez, and all the staff up at Bristol for their support of the USL, of all of our clubs, and of the game uh, itself in, uh, in North America. Two thousand and nineteen, uh, big year. Twenty twenty was another big year for us. Lots happening. Uh, we kick off twenty twenty with the launch of our newest expansion club uh, in San Diego. Uh, excited to welcome a great new local ownership group, uh, top-notch front office, and U.S. soccer legend Landon Donovan, who will be taking over the football side and will be the head coach. And Landon will be here this weekend uh, to support this event. Uh, another soccer legend joining the USL uh, for the twenty one season. Uh, World Cup winner David Villa. Uh, of Spain will be behind our new Queensboro FC club in Queens, New York. So a couple of great clubs to, uh, to look forward to. Uh, but this weekend is about these two great clubs and all they've achieved uh, this season. Uh, both clubs have had a long, hard road to get here to this final. Uh, both clubs have had to knock off uh, top-seeded teams in their conference. So deservedly, uh, both teams are here. And as Ryan said, Royal Monarchs are... Um, uh, first time appearance in the championship final, so we congratulate everyone at the organization, uh, the owner, Deloy Hansen, who's been a great friend of ours and a supporter of the USL over these last few years, has built a phenomenal infrastructure at the club. So we congratulate Deloy uh, and the leadership in Rob Zarkos, Jake Houter, uh, Dan Egner, uh, have worked tirelessly over the last few years to put a really impressive structure in place, culminating with this great season. And so congratulations to those guys. Congratulations to Coach Alavi, who's done great things since taking over and really molded this team and brought them into a championship quality side. And congratulate Captain uh, Jack Blake and all of the team and the coaching staff uh, for an amazing season and wishing you the very best of luck uh, on the big match on Sunday. And Louisville City, uh, deja vu, here we are again. Uh, when I was here last year, I was privileged to spend a bit of time uh, with John and Paolo and Luke, and we talked a little bit about Culture uh, versus a uh, winning team, you know, and culture gets you through times when you're not winning. And this club is building that culture and how important that is. Uh, and the takeaway was this team is special and this group of players is special. And to be for the fast, uh, past five years in a row um, conference uh, finalists, past three years in a row hosting the championship final, and for the past two years in a row have won the USL championship. And as Ryan said, if they win, uh, this will be the first year, uh, team uh, to win three championships. So this team is special. Congratulations, guys, on another fantastic season. Uh, and again, wishing you guys the best of luck in the big game on uh, Sunday. Uh, in closing, uh, I would just like to pay a little tribute to someone uh, who's not here with us anymore. Um, but he was instrumental uh, in bringing this club to this city. And his vision um, is playing out now to have a top quality team and have an amazing stadium to call home. So. Wayne Estopano, um, I, I'd like to think he's up there smiling down on us all and, and very proud of what you have all achieved. Uh, and that was his early vision for this club. So we are forever thankful that he uh, was a part of our league and was a part of this club and this community. And I'm sure you'll, you'll uh, join me in thanking him. Um, with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for your attention, for being here today. Enjoy the big match on Sunday. and I'll pass it back over to Ryan. Thank you. So we'll uh, proceed with the, the Q&A part of today's press conference. Our very own Nina Kusmano will be passing out a microphone. So I just ask that you please wait until Nina makes her way over to you before asking the question. Uh, we'll start today with a question from Jeff Ruder, who joins us from The Athletic. Uh, this question is actually for both Homison and Jack. Uh, this season has seen um, a lot of discussion about the merits of MLS two sides and about how competitive they can be in the championship. What do you think that you've been able to show through the Monarchs uh, as far as the potential of a team like that? Uh, I think that the, the start of play from the club, uh, from the MLS down to USL, I think that a lot of the players that have been in the squad this year have been predominantly USL players. You know, now and again, we'll have the odd MLS players come down. Um, as the captain of the team, I'm extremely proud of, of what we've achieved. I think that if you look at the squad, the average age is extremely young. Uh, we have the odd veteran in there, and the leadership of the group has been able to, to push us through as well. Um, so yeah, we're, we're excited to be here and can't wait for, for this weekend. Uh, Kelsey Steele from USLsoccer.com. 
Thanks, Ryan. Uh, my question is for Hack. I, I think you guys have a, a really interesting organization here where you have a 27 team that had eight players, I believe, um, on that side that are still with you, and then 2018, 11 players as well. So we say it time and time again, there's such a culture being built in this city. What does that say about the experience moving into to Sunday? Do you guys feel like this is something that the players are prepared for and you guys are prepared for and it's just kind of something that you're accustomed to at this point? Yeah, I think it's just an expectation, really. Um, and within our club, and particularly within our locker room, it's just a belief we all have. Um, the expectation is that we should be playing in this game. Um, and that brings a lot of pressure. Uh, it certainly isn't easy to deal with that sometimes. But it's a credit to Paulo and the rest of the players in that locker room because their experience and their ability to work through some really difficult moments this year has been so impressive. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud to be a small part of that culture, um, a small part of this club. And, you know, for the last five years, it's amazing what this club has done. Um, so, again, just happy to be here with them. But it is a really special group of men that, uh, that are in that locker room and I get to work with on a daily basis. Thanks, Coach. I got a question for Paolo. Um, you've been part of this team for three years, but this year in particular, um, was there a moment when you know things weren't going your way? I think a lot of City faithful go back to that 3-0 loss at Loudoun. That was a low point for everybody. As a player and as a leader on this team, was there a moment where a switch was flipped and your thought and you said, "All right, guys, things need to change." And is there anything that you can say about that inside the locker room? Um, there was many low points this season, but there's been many low points the four years that I've been here. That's just the, the way season goes. You're going to drop points. Um, there's ups and downs. There's people that get hurt. There's people that come back. Uh, for us, it's not really you know, a, a, a switch that's flipped. It's more just believing in what we're doing and believing that you know, if we keep sticking to our process, it will, it will uh, come through for us and that we'll be successful. Jeff? Uh, we'll go back to the Monarchs on this one. Jack, you've played in both the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference. Currently, there's a perception that the East is the more competitive of the two. How would you describe the merit of the West? Uh, I think from playing in both, both very high level. Um, both have extremely high intensities, uh, both very technical uh, players all involved. Um, obviously, over the past, you know, however long the years, uh, the league's been going on, there's the, the East have usually prevailed in the, in the final, and, and we're hoping to change that this weekend. I think that all I can speak of is the players that I've played with and against, and I think from, from both sides of the league, there's some fantastic players, and uh, every club should be proud of what they've put out, especially this season. Uh, question for Hamison and or Jack. <laughs> Hi, guys. So just you had mentioned it, the age of, I would say the average age on the Monarchs a lot younger than Louisville and Louisville has played in five straight Eastern Conference finals, gone to the last two and won the championship game. So what's the message to the group that the Monarchs have, a group that has been tested a lot this year in a variety of different ways, heading into this championship game so the nerves don't get to them and they just stick to playing the way that they have been that's gotten them to this point? Uh, what I think is, we have a style of play, like just said before. We had a, uh, pardon me. <laughs> uh, we had a style of play, like Jack said before. Uh, we, hit, we, we need to stick on that. We need to remind together what we have been doing until right now. Like you say, they have experienced players. They know how to play final. But we want to make history, and history is not done yet. And we need to uh, get out on the field and with that mentality to get what we're looking for. Uh, this is for John and Hamason. Um, what kind of challenge is it to prepare for an opponent that, you know, at this point in the season, you've faced everybody in your conference at least once, um, so you're familiar with them, but now you're going up against someone that's not only unfamiliar, but also in, in a different conference? Yeah. <laughs> Gracious host. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we... We, we, didn't know, we didn't know them very much, but in the last week uh, had been a long week, just watching games, watching them, how they play, how to figure out uh, how they play. Uh, like I said before, big team, 
really, really good team. What they have been done, this is great. Uh, experienced players, uh, great style of play. I think they're going to be an interesting match. Going to be an interesting match again. Both, both great teams. Coach. Yeah, I would agree with the last part. I think it's going to be really interesting because I think both teams are going to have to, to feel each other out a little bit and see what the tactics are like. Um, I think it's very interesting playing in, such, in a league where you literally don't see the other half of the league the entire time. And when, from our experience going through the East and literally in the playoffs, you're facing your opponent for the third time. And now to prepare, it is such a challenge. Um, you can only watch so much video. You can go back and look up lineups and different tactics and things. So it is a challenge. Um, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, I think it is a, I, I remember the old days of baseball when the, the National League and the American League didn't play each other until the World Series. I think it's similar to that. Paolo's going to kill me, by the way, for having a baseball reference. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Jeff? Uh, can you talk a bit about the feeling in the locker room as you were heading down the stretch in the regular season and through this playoff run, especially entering this year as something of an underdog being the four seed in the East? Yeah. Um, I think uh, the feeling even even that you know the, our lowest point in the season when we're sitting in seventh or eighth is still uh, understanding that we've put a lot of work in. And I, I think what a lot of people don't realize is that we were only, I think, two or three points shy this year of what we were last year. So we never really saw ourselves as, as having, you know, being in a, in a bad place or, or underperforming. Or, well, we did see ourselves underperforming and underachieving, but not ever going to hit the panic button. I think we, we still had belief and we still had confidence in, in what we did and how we trained and, and just had confidence that we could get it together towards the end. We'll come to Kelsey and then Mike Watts from ESPN. Jack, I, uh, I, I want to hear from you a little bit on, on this opportunity because this is uh, your first time ever being in a final, a uh, very different circumstance than the other side of the podium. So for you, what are you looking forward to most for, for Sunday night? Uh, first and foremost, you know, it would be great to lift the trophy. You know, we've, we, we did it last week, but the, the job's half done in, in our eyes. Um, like Paolo was saying, at one point of the season, we were in 14th place. Um, the, the league, has, has, the standard has been very high. Um, there was not a lot of points from where we were at 14th and to you know, second or third place. So for me, the achievement that we've got to get here uh, has been phenomenal and to be involved in it, but the, the job's not done. And you know, to, to go that extra bit further and to, and to win the whole thing for us um, would be phenomenal. And for me personally, yeah, fantastic. Hamas, and you've played in very big games in your career. This might be the biggest that you've coached in. Describe uh, what kind of is different in, in your preparation this week, whether the nerves are different uh, and, and your expectations are different managing as opposed to playing in a game of this magnitude. Uh, the feeling is, is different, of course. A player, you know that you can do something when you step on the field, but right now, as a coach, it's more about manage players. It's more about getting those players ready in those guys, in, in, into that game, for that game. Uh, don't go through motions. Uh, take good decisions in the field. It's more about that during the week, just getting those guys for, for, that, for that game. We'll take two more. Uh, start with Jeff. You touched on the conferences not playing each other during the regular season and this being the one opportunity to see how they weigh up. Would you, this is for all of you, would you like to see more interconference play in USL in the future? <laughs> I'm going to get out my soapbox right now because this, this one, I think absolutely we should, we should design a way to have an Eastern Conference Shield champion and a West uh, Conference Shield champion. And then I think we should have a game to start the whole year off between those two the following year. I think that would be a great showcase for our, our leagues and a good way to reward both, if you will, conferences for 
the long season that you have to go through before you get to this, the ultimate game. Any other questions? I'm curious, John uh, Hamason, you, you know, you would have coached against him when you were with the Union, uh, when he was with the Red Bulls, especially. Um, him as a player, the sort of mentality he had, strong, very strong defender. Do you see that go, coming through on the players, uh, or excuse me, coming through to his players when you're watching film? Do, you, do they seem to play kind of like he did? Yeah, I think it's a great question because um, he was a fantastic player. And uh, unfortunately, I had to coach against him several times. And, and he was a beast, um, excellent player. Uh, and so, yeah, I think, I think you always see a little bit of that in your teams when you're coaching. You certainly try to you know, relate those experiences as a player to your players when you're trying to lead them. And that's, that's for sure something that in my scouting of of the Monarchs this week, you know, it's easy to see their determination, their fight. Um, again, I think that's going to make for an exceptional final. Well, I think that's a good place to end it. I want to thank you all for being here today. Thank you for those watching um, the live stream. And thank you to both Real Monarchs and Louisville City FC for joining us. We'll see you Sunday night.